అందరికీ నమస్కారం వెల్కమ్ టు కంటిన్యూస్ లెర్నింగ్ ఎన్హాన్స్మెంట్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ అండ్ లెవెంత్ డే ఆన్లైన్ ట్రైనింగ్ ఫర్ టీచర్స్ ఆన్ సిబిఎస్ఈ ప్యాటర్న్ ఈజ్ బీయింగ్ కండక్టెడ్ బై గవర్నమెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ స్కూల్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ సమగ్ర శిక్ష అండ్ సిమెంట్ నౌ ఐ విల్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ ద ప్రెసెంటర్స్ బిఎన్ ప్రదీప్ వర్కింగ్ ఎస్ టీజీటీ ఇన్ ఆర్ఐ మైసూర్ ఈ హ్యాస్ వేస్ట్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ ఇన్ డిజైనింగ్ ఇన్నోవేటివ్ టీఎల్ అండ్ ఎం రమ్య వర్కింగ్ ఎస్ టీజీటీ ఇన్ ఆర్ఐ మైసూర్ షీ హ్యాస్ బిన్ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ ఎన్సిఆర్టి ట్రైనింగ్స్ అండ్ కంటెంట్ డెవలప్మెంట్ వెల్కమ్ సార్ వెల్కమ్ మ్యామ్ దే విల్ బి గివింగ్ అన్ ఎక్సలెంట్ ప్రెసెంటేషన్ ఆన్ లెసన్ ప్లాన్ టీచింగ్ అండ్ లెర్నింగ్ ప్రాసెస్ now over to pradeep sir please start your session sir thank you sir uh, good afternoon everyone i am mr pradeep bn teacher in demonstration school original institute of education mysore i am working in dm school since uh, 14 years today uh, i welcome you all for my session that is on teaching techniques in classroom teaching with respect to environmental science friends what is evs we all know that environmental study is a systematic study that relates with environment a systematic study means you all know that it involves explore explore exploring observing and investigating a scientific process in which as our environment is studied systematically see in our environment we have many aspects like starting from biotic and abiotic mainly biotic means all that living things surrounding us and abiotic means all that non living things surrounding us but it doesn't end up here when we are dealing with environmental studies it also includes many aspects like social and cultural aspects because we live in a society and when we are projecting it to the children we need to have a lot of knowledge and we are, we should be in a position to transact the essence of environmental studies to the children basically it is a relationship that we have with environment how see like we come to school as a teacher children also come to school but do we make same observation as children or children make same observation as we make for instance if you happen to go to a market wherein there is lot of vegetables we have to buy uh, imagine that we are with our children and we are going to buy some vegetables what do we observe do that same observation we make like children or children make same observation like us no if we go to a vegetable vendor we can think that onion uh, many vegetables will be there and we may we may be very uh, uh, routine in our observation we may only think price of it but children they doesn't think like that children will think how it has come from where it has come some some fruits or some vegetables are sweet and some are sour how it is who has brought it here how it is happening and how the things are coming and how we are eating how we, how these things are all coming here see they are more creative in thinking and observing the facts see we are living in the world wherein it belongs to everybody so when we are transacting uh, the essence of evs to children we should keep always in mind that we are in their world and we should go into their world fine see for example if you happen to study or if you happen to go through uh, the previous or 2 3 decades back textbooks or study material that might be uh, studied by our forefathers or our uh, elders we see that uh, even in at a very lower stage uh, we can see that 
uh, there is a cut a clear uh, expression of science social science just from the beginning but is it same now no because now we can see lot of things has changed the essence of ncf national curriculum framework 2005 has come in and it is trying to on that basis the study materials are prepared in a such a way that they are <clears throat> they are bringing up to the children's children environment you can see story coming in you can see narration forms you can see you can see a lot of picture picture rich environment all these things are happening just to make children friendly and we are making we are we are talking of activity based we are talking of all these things which are all we are making uh, uh, the presence of the children within and they are learning and enjoying it see uh, and coming to the teaching techniques in classroom it related to evs we have a lot of uh, many methods like discussion method project method experimental methods brainstorming sessions you can uh, we can have and survey method and field visits and inquiry methods all these techniques we can use in teaching uh, evs in the classroom but before that how we are prepared how well we can transact how well we can reach children and we should make sure that whether are we are still are we are making ourselves within the uh, environment of children is it coming clear or are the children are enjoying the class are we making uh, our presentation reachable to children all these things we have to keep in mind friends before i start my presentation i would like to inform you that on the first half i will be uh, talking of some of the important aspects in avs that you must have already studied and on the other half i will be taking a lesson of your your uh, textbook which has which has come very beautifully with all sophistications and beautifully it has come up and i i would love to make a lesson on it that is on water of a theme theme also water so i'll make this presentation uh, with my level best friends we know that environmental studies at the primary stage envisages exposing children to surrounding environment and sensitizing towards prevailing environment how it, how we can say that the environmental studies at the primary stage have lot of things to make to or make children to expose to the their own surrounding not that we make uh, or we take to lab directly or we take a, a scientific uh, very tough no we are just bringing them into the very the knowledge what they have what prerequisites they have and how best we can sensitize using those prerequisite which is which is around them what is prevailing around them say for instance a children children may be coming to school uh, according to their uh, uh, wish like uh, they may be coming from far away they may be using lot of transportation there comes a the transportation if you if you happen to discuss in the class it is around them what is happening the transport system they are using if you happen to talk about what food they had it is around them and what they are eating within uh, at at their home and how they are utilizing uh, the food aspects and that is the thing uh, what we should bring up in the class itself that is the all the things that is happening around children are central for this uh, kind of exposures the teaching learning process in evs involves an integrated and thematic approach friends we all know that the evs involves an integrated and thematic approach integrated means like uh, see uh, if you happen it so happened in in my case like my grandfather and father sometimes it happened to uh, take our textbooks of present day age and they started seeing it and they were surprised to see uh, in evs and uh, and mass there are stories coming in people are talking about Uh, and they were surprised to see the stories are there in mathematics book and the poems are there in mathematics book or evs books how is it in our in our ages we we didn't have like this and and it is very nice to see because it is colorful and picture rich so in evs as such we can learn many things and it is integrated with all subjects say for instance maths uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, evs uh, 
the calculation or chart reading. All this we study in the mathematics and it also comes in EVS and a poem recitation, for instance. It's also there in EVS. It is all integrated because children, children do not discriminate or do not make any comparison with any subject because it's only prerequisite that matters when it comes to children. So as I say, EVS involves a lot of integrated approach. Uh, they can learn from anywhere, society itself. Uh, when they come on, they, maybe when they are re, when they are coming on the road, they can see a lot of things, and that is the prerequisite that we can. That is the uh, environment that is surrounding them, and that is what makes a basement for learning and thematic approach. And we we have made or we have created a lot of themes that are very near to them, and that that, that they are leaving, like uh, like water, like food, and transport. All, all these things are themes that are very near to them and from them it is uh, they are learning the EVS. So it is said that uh, we study environmental studies for environment and through environment. We are studying it through environment and it is for environment in the sense uh, we, we study the environmental science from the environment itself and what for we study? We study it for uh, preserving many things, preserving good things in the environment and making uh, changes in environment that are harmful for uh, environment. That's how it is. The environment that involves uh, all that themes around the children and creating learning situations in context to children is very crucial in teaching learning process. So it is what like uh, the situation should be created in keeping in mind the children. See, we cannot bring down uh, a big theorem or uh, a very big uh, uh, scientific process and we cannot make, uh, we cannot start a discussion rather we can ask children we can start with a, a simple brainstorming session we can ask the uh, we can take the feedback we, we can know the children uh, level of learning and how it is can, how we can go further these things should come in uh, in mind of teachers once we uh, go into their world probably we should go to their world and we should help them to uh, understand the process of environment. And these situations should be created, keeping in mind the, <clears throat> the children, what could be their prerequisites. See, uh, we follow heterogeneous uh, uh, schooling system and even multi-level schooling system. Well, we cannot think that uh, it, is a, it is difficult for us, rather they, they become resource for it. See, in a group of children, we can think that uh, there may be different uh, uh, different uh, kind of children who are very good in drawing, who are very good in presenting, we are, who are very good in collecting things. All this could be made up and they could um, make a good presentation. Meanwhile, they also learn a rest. rest. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so basically it is a creating learning situations that we should provide to children. And this makes children to involve in a uh, greater depth and to understand the process of uh, that, uh, what is happening in environmental studies. So in teaching learning process of EVS, opportunity should be given to encounter various social issues. See, for example, when we, when we are in the class, we should open up discussion, open up discussion social issues may not be a very big issues a very small issues within the classroom that uh, that uh, that prevails our natural process for instance uh, how how a day is happening how night is happening see it may be very common and it may be very routine as i said for adults but it is really i tell you uh, they think a lot they 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 wonder uh, their world is wondering when, when they come to class one, class two, class three, class four, they start they slowly start achieving and they start building up their own concept. That's how constructiv constructivism we speak of. And when we come to natural process, say for example, uh, I'll be discussing it later also. Like there is a tank in a village and during summer it all, whole tank will get uh, vacated or it disappears. We say it is evaporated, but they say it is disappeared. The water got disappeared. Where did it go? Like that, they are really wondering and we should really sensitize those issues and we should bring and we should appreciate that, yes, you are observing those things and social issues also or to their level, not the very big issues that we should bring into the class or very big natural process, just to sensitize them 
and they should feel that they are within the surrounding or within the nature and they are observing we should always build up their confidence in this case and in this process of learning children are engaged in various process of learning using multiple sensors and individual and group setups friends uh, the children always learn with using their sensors we know that heart uh, head and hands see uh, they use lot of multiple sensor and that's how it is uh, the evs or any lower or lower classes it is made activity oriented because uh, they enjoy doing it not by only just by listening no this cannot happen this cannot happen with a child they cannot um, uh, take a uh, they cannot concentrate for a longer time no it is not possible so that's how we bring them use of multiple sensors like let them put their hands let them put their head let them put let them enjoy the class or let them enjoy the activity we should create such activities that can they enjoy and they even uh, they can create lot of things and they learn on their own pace and and you can make always uh, provision for individual and group setups once these are all created the individuality also develops and the the the, the problem of uh, mingling with others this also be addressed at earlier earlier stage otherwise some there will be cases wherein they go go aloof or they go, come out of the group these are also these such issues also be uh, uh, addressed so for example in under group setups we can even address the issues of inclusive education how this group setups can uh, even include others see uh, maybe uh, differently abled or especially abled children will be there in the class when they in the group setups they enjoy learning and one, the other children can really help them and even sometimes they help others this is how we can bring up evs class uh, which is of complete setup uh, which involves everything that is surrounding them and the learning needs to be provided according to child's developmental need and learning styles and each child has his own pace and his own type of learning see in in primary it is true that uh, Uh, uh if if we make them to say they will say no actually it, it doesn't happen like that the learning happens at their own pace we should understand children and we should give them uh, opportunity to involve and make up their mind to learn rather we insist them to learn they they they, they, they themselves will surely learn when you allow them to learn when 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 they personalize their own Uh, attitude and when they can mingle with others when they enjoy the process they will certainly they will learn and this needs should be uh, made uh, available from the teacher side and in this case the age age also be should, uh, age and Uh, slow learners also be uh, kept in mind and differently able people all this uh, you can go for a group activities and we can go for uh, uh, other types of uh, or uh, worksheets that are specially meant for uh, slow learners all this can be given just to make that they are also involved in the group friends this you must have uh, already studied uh, in the previous classes also say for instance what are curricular expectation what is what does curriculum expects Uh, expectations in evs see uh, this also says that acquire awareness about immediate surrounding through lived experiences on various themes that are related to daily life yes this is very important because this should happen because uh, what is uh, the child makes lot of awareness themselves by immediate surrounding see uh, the very big class happens outside the class when they are coming when, when they happen to see a very big traffic and and if they happen to observe carefully they could see lot of pollution or the smoke coming out and this is what they make uh, observation they are very good at observation when those are tapped inside the classroom situations they can even uh, uh, they can come out with uh, many uh, like projects they are they can express in the classroom so this is and lot many a uh, lot many uh, themes that are surrounding them like water family all these things are there which uh, with the immediate surrounding that are lived experiences so once once they say family we have to discuss they express how they are who are the family member whether they are in nuclear family whether they are they are in joint family and how their experiences and we cannot expect each child to have a same kind of this so these uh, experiences should be kept open in the classroom 
So this makes the things what we set and slowly it leads to the achievement of the learning objectives. And as you all know that teams include food, water, family, animals, animals, animals and plants, what they see outside. Uh, you can see in the teams, just it includes that are there within the uh, uh, structure of, or the, it is all reachable to the uh, <coughs> children or it is where their uh, immediate surrounding is. So we start studying, they start observing. So the first thing is, as I said, observation, all these things starts from the very uh, next to them. See, if a, if a child can happen to, if a child can speak or if the child can name many animals around them and you can name many plants around them, I think that's a wonderful thing. So, and if they can discuss water, <coughs> about water, like what type of water they are using, how, how it is coming to them and if, about the food, what type of food they are eating and about the family, what type of family they are, all these things as we told and as we have discussed, it is all around the children. So nature and nurture natural curiosity and creativity with immediate surroundings. See, nurturing natural curiosity is that something uh, that we should allow uh, the you know, children to feel curious. Say for example, taking out uh, very good examples that are happening around. Say for example, we go for a field trip or a field visit or a nature visit, nature walk we can say. So once we go them, they should feel it. How, see if, if they happen to see the nest. See, uh, it is really, uh, we all know that uh, the, the birds themselves, they uh, build nest. But uh, how come a child can understand whether uh, bird can, is it possible? They're really curious to know and they're really amazed by the world they are looking in. So we should nurture them with a lot, ample of examples and we should give them more type of activities relatively and we should make them creative in their expressions through the immediate surroundings. Uh, this is how uh, we can reach to the curricular expectations in EVS and also uh, this leads to the formation of learning objectives. And once we bring all these aspects in the uh, classroom discussions or using the, <clears throat> the techniques or uh, pedagogy, we can bring out or we can achieve learning objectives. So you develop skills like observation, uh, very important skill that one should, uh, the teacher should always look into the children's children uh, participation. See, we should give ample of opportunities to observe for observe first. In the sense, how a child can observe. See, once they see the new things and once they happen to be in a situation, they can observe. And if you happen to give a situation, then they start thinking. And if you keep something, if you give them, uh, if you take to the nature and show them or you give a pictures, then they start observing how it is, how it is like this why it is like this, make them and ask them to be questioning, questioning. This is the very important, once they start questioning themselves and they'll come up with a lot of their own form of hypothesis and they start discussing. All these things happens and these skills should be developed in the younger age. And we can even, uh, slowly we can start experimenting, uh, experimentation process. Like we take a very simple examples, like, uh, like experiments within water, and and interaction of course uh, like interaction you interact with among among friends and with the teachers or with the elders all these skills will help them to know their nature first to know their uh, surrounding first see this skill should help to make their uh, skills not just not the skills they start learning the things see once they uh, make a hypothesis and once they form their own uh, once they construct their own knowledge and slowly they can lead this lead to the uh, bigger uh, concept formation in the higher stages. For instance, like uh, take water, water and properties of, we simply say, we, we take water uh, and we, uh, we drink water in, in a very low stage. And if you ask a very uh, primary school, they say, what is the main source of water? They would, they would only say it is from the tap water. See, uh, it, all, it all differs from where they live, uh, the urban and rural sector, they all differ. So with giving a lot of examples and a lot of uh, uh, this, using this questioning discussion, this can make children to feel uh, uh, and observe a lot many things within the nature and develop sensitivity for the natural 
physical human resources in the immediate environment see we should when you are living in a such a situation like uh, when we are living in a society and we should sensitive to the natural things first see how how you come to school when they, when it is a winter or when it is a rainy you should be sensitive and this sensitivity should reach to the children and you should be hygiene you should you should go with a clean and neat and you should keep yourself neat and what all these things that the values also you should inculcate and you should be sensitive to the natural and physical and human resources in the immediate environment and you should should be able to absorb many things even human resources say for example you can ask your parents you can ask your elders you can ask the neighbors see uh, because you can see in the textbooks it is even stated that and you have to fill some columns by asking others see this sensitivity should develop and we should give uh, we should give some kind of project some kind of uh, work that they mingle in the society because uh, as i said this all form prerequisite for concept formations or learning uh, for learning objectives then raise issues related to equality justice and respect for others we point see it this should start from the early stage and it should start from the class or classroom situation also say for example uh, it would be very uh, very normal uh, like there there will be a, usually there will be a quarrel among girls and boys yes why this is happen and this when you take it to the a little bigger situation yes girls are treated like this boys are treated like all these things yes it is a time they should be told it is happening and we should come out of it and we should fight for justice these are all the values that we can inculcate and we should respect for others view point this is the most important thing that in a classroom situation uh, that uh, sense of accepting and respect for others view point also should be increased keeping all these thing curricular aspects in mind i move on to the next session that is teaching and learning process in evs classroom see we say that in evs classroom active participation of children for construction of knowledge is important aspect in evs learning that is active participation in the sense we are using all type of uh, that means teacher should uh, make his participation or her participation less but children should involve in more in process of construction construction of their own knowledge see our our uh, work is to facilitate facilitate what uh, they are learning say for instance we have a theme with theme related learning we we go with a lesson and what are related relatively how you can build up in the class how you can give the resources in this way we can think of and we can bring out the discussion we can conduct as brainstorming sessions activities projects all this you should make active participation of the children and they should come up with new ideas and they should make the things uh, they should understand the things and you are there you are always there to clear and clear their doubts and help them to learn and even uh, assessment when it comes to assessment you are there you are using uh, formative assessment for learning for further learning you can always there to check their uh, points or check their and correct them and improve their learning so once we say active participation of children it is them to involve in process of learning so emphasize on developing awareness of the natural social and cultural environment see our te- our evs teaching should develop awareness of natural things say how it is uh, how the seasons are changing see it may be a uh, natural observation for an adult but it is not so for a child as i told you how this day and night things are happening how this nature uh, is changing itself why in one season the plants uh, look different and one season they bloom the flower blooms or all these things are happening in nature, nature and we should make them to observe all those things and even social aspects the elders are there uh, the uh, differently abled children will be there all these things and we are living in a society all these things should and also we should keep cultural aspects in, in our mind also see this we should emphasize and develop this awareness of nature and social as i told you the evs study study of evs is systematic study of the natural aspects social and cultural aspects also so because this surrounds uh, our children not that we are uh, as i told you in the earlier earlier uh, study material we could only find uh, science social science in a separate manner 
but when we come with a uh, the present day beautiful textbooks we can see picture rich environment and all these aspects children saying something children reciting some poem children they are doing some activities in the class there is scope for and there is room for everything that children can do and actively participate so we should also try to bring those aspects within the classroom then opportunities can be created for children to utilize various resources for learning evs see opportunities we should create rather uh, see we should, we, can, we need not use only textbook as a resource we have a lot of other opportunities take them out uh, give them uh, some uh, you formulate your own groups or you give them some uh, scope for learning to themselves and collect their observation that is most important collect their observation think and act and even uh, you can use lot of uh, techniques to bring them out open up in the class so this teaching learning process in evs will uh, give a lot of opportunities for children to acquire uh, prerequisite that are required for our classroom interaction see for example uh, as i as i was discussing if if they happen to see a magic see we we may be knowing the scientific process behind them but everything look them uh, for them it is a magic so for example if i put uh, if i take a oil of water and put some salt or sugar in it they can see the sugar and salt before on when it goes into the water it's like a magic them they would feel uh, they would feel that uh, how it is happening or where it is going such curiosity we should always uh, bring them in children to learn and enjoy the process of learning in the classroom situation and efforts can be made to relate child local knowledge to the school knowledge and see uh, this is a, once again a very important thing that effort should be made to relate their local knowledge to the school say for example uh, what knowledge look see in your ap textbooks we can see they have brought all the local local uh, presence as a resource they have brought up people around them they have brought up uh, the resources what all there like panchayat what all what all uh, is a for example in a, in a village we can think of a process or system which all it is locally available so for example a, a, a village may be very good in uh, forming some if only one kind of then that is the resource and presence of uh, panchayat all these things forms a resource, uh, resource as it is locally present and we can enhance their understanding using this type of knowledge and discourage rote learning yes once they learn starting learning through observation and they need not have to uh, go for you know by arting or something i will show with my some of my examples wherein children uh, see they may be having language problem and they they need not have to go with a sentence i will show you one beautiful example a child writes uh, in a complete picture form but you will find all type of answer in it and you will never miss a point within it just writing a pictures and how can a teacher cannot say that the concept is not attained and uh, for a motivating you can just admired that kind of presentation also because yes there may be some language issues also but the presence the way of presentation is also important in case of just to bring down the rota because if you start uh, uh, avoiding that process the process of expression also is lost and child may not learn also that is most dangerous thing uh, let them express in their own form or in in own their in in their own way and opportunities are given to explore observe discuss speak and ask question this is most important they should be given lot of chances to observe discuss among themselves and speak loud speak speak within the class they should feel uh, once it is if it is a evs class or whatever the class it is they should be uh, free enough to speak and ask questions questions in the sense uh, related to theme or related to uh, the discussions what well, sir i have seen this can i present this yes you you are most welcome this uh, once it is there they start and the rest of the children also start observing many things so emphasize on inculcation of values skills related to environment see values co coming to the values it is not a very big values that we expect maybe a simple uh, respecting elders uh, respecting uh, others and uh, respecting others view point or even uh, uh, keeping themselves clean keeping the uh, classroom or uh, such simple things such simple values can be inculcated and not to go for a very big uh, test or uh, let's not worry about uh, very big things among children because uh, 
this small uh, in, in values will slowly will lead to the bigger values as such and efforts can be made to develop appreciation for diversity see we live in a uh, society wherein uh, all type of things are there and we live in a very diverse society yes there should be appreciation rather uh, this is like that this is like the yes in the early stage let's leave we are leaving this we can give history as an example we can see how beautifully we are lead uh, how what is the beauty of our history just take these things bring down to the classroom situations and give them and then should, the children should participate appreciate the this kind of diversity yes it is not that we are facing problems it is also true that we are we are in a, such a beautiful country and we should, we are all uh, living happily then uh, once you come to the uh, evs learning in classroom it is a very important thing to build up our own resources see for example resource in environment for evs resource enrichment for evs teaching learning process this is uh, quite uh, important because evs learning envisages experiences of children from their immediate surrounding and opportunities see we should make we should create room for uh, by building our own resources see all we say it is true uh, we we say that children are coming from very immediate surrounding and how they are building up their own knowledge but we should also try to give them some kind of resources and we should equip our own resources to enhance their experiences say for example go to field visits or park community centers and make it a structurized visits once you if you structurize this yes there will be a small noting of it small drawing of it yes bring it to the class and show them they suddenly will enjoy the situations and uh, they will share their things and this will form a resource for them so uh, we can keep uh, the things ready uh, before the class or before a theme and according to the theme we can prepare our own uh, resources and textbooks are used as resources for various things yes we have very good textbooks even your textbooks or they because they are very good because they are in very different way as i told you we can see uh, story coming in recitation coming in and uh, narration forms and uh, you know child is saying something to her friend all these things ch children love it it is it is for, it is made for them and how it is beautifully uh, expressed in the classroom is also important see for example textbooks are used as resources for various themes with effective transaction like narrative form story forms with the picture rich examples and suggested activities you can find all these aspects in the in our textbooks and it provides joyful learning in children see once they enjoying learning then the process of learning will become very easy and uh, as i said the whole class will start uh, responding to the uh, what uh, the learning outcomes are there what our our what teacher is trying to put for the children then provision shall be made for picture reading yes all these things we can make it ready so provision shall be made for picture readings like making some some kind of preparation for audio listening see why this is coming in because these are all uh, uh, they enjoy it see something birds you can make a, uh, uh, audios of birds and you bring you ask them to listen and try to uh, just identify i am sure uh, from village uh, or a village sector sure many children will uh represent or say the correct names and this may not be possible in urban sector yes you can bring down those audios and play them and ask them to listen and videotape some of the things all these things make them curious or just to bring the nature around them in a reality and this will make a curious presentation on how the children can understand it and a planned visit to real situations like visit to flower garden museum this is i told when you have a plan around you so it is true you are going but when you have a plan little plan not that children are not let to enjoy yes let them have their time and let but when they make a simple note of it and and make a uh, provision for uh, bringing down this uh, uh uh situations like this they can really certainly enjoy and this form a resource building to the classroom i will show you one example see if i am right uh, this is a report prepared by a child we we happen to go for a, a field visits and we asked to prepare a small note of it so for example child can bring uh, yes they make a small presentation where they have visited the place like they visited a temple or and they visited a dam this is a harangi dam it is a tributary of a kaveri river see all these uh, when they produce this 
and we, we can keep it as a resource and we can discuss in the classroom say for example when i am discussing about water scarcity so it is not we live in a in a place like mysore we have a dam nearby but uh, once uh, sometimes we i ask you to i ask children to note down the dams um, uh, the level of water in that how many feet it is coming because they know that if it if it doesn't crash or 120 or if it doesn't reach 120 feet of water in dam this leads to the scarcity in summer yes then what do you, what should we do these are all the things that goes in and small activity that can uh, you can give them is like give them simple <clears throat> simple observation or simple following of water level in the dam or how much it is happening and even you can go for moon sighting like if you happen to uh, go for moon rising or it, it is all available in newspaper just bring down those observation into the class have a discussion and make that uh, some what is the natural process that is happening in the class how it is affecting the uh, uh, nature and how we are responding to them and these things come into the picture these itself forms a very good prerequisite for further learning then an arrangement of talks and orientation from resources and this is always can happen uh, see for example uh, we can arrange many uh, resource person see always teacher cannot give a uh, full um, resources and there could be a change in uh, as a resource person or there could be a doctor visit there could be a uh, say for example if you happen to bring a snake charmer in a class it is going to be a wonderful uh, resource for them because uh, he may be just acting and tapping the feet and uh, making that uh, snake to with his bean making all this is happening and the scientific process you can explain always like they may not uh, the, the snakes cannot hear but he is making them to move like this see uh, and it cannot hear bean bean sound but he is tapping the all, and what all the other information he may be having like uh, with respect to he may be he may, he may be knowing many uh, poisonous snakes and non poisonous snake and he may be showing uh, that uh, <clears throat> thanks all these things uh, that is uh, sometimes some resource person are very beautiful or uh, very uh, meaningful resource uh, interventions can help children to make their own concepts and ideas and this again strengthening this teaching learning activities see here to ensure their active participation to ensure their active participation we, we, we should make them their uh, hands on their activities hands on activities and prompting to discuss this is very important there are many kind as i told you there will be heterogeneous group and there could be a many slow learners there could be many fast learners and we should bring them and we should motivate them in the class we should always uh, keep an eye on slow learners so that they are also involved and uh, uh, inclusive classroom also should be addressed so you should prompt the very best example is prompt to discuss ask them to question and make them to participate within and elaborate children ideas see best thing in uh, us classrooms to elaborate their children ideas rather than we give them ideas yes because it is their world and they are speaking from their viewpoint and th those may be the views that might have seen by other children so that that forms a very good prerequisite or uh, the process of learning in the classroom and exploring through interaction with pictures charts data analysis and and participation in visual effects apps like virtual tour see for example in the in this kind of pandemic situation we can go for an option wherein uh, you use a virtual tour you need not have to go there you can just simply uh, sit at home or you can make an some arrangement of kind of things where the children can be view the uh, like any fort or any things by just sitting by by viewing the mobile see this is this is some kind of uh, technology that also we can use in the classroom and experimentation experimentation tabulation analysis estimation process improve understanding yes always this kind of when we are doing in the class we should always see to it that this experiments are performed before children they should feel that surprise they should know how it is happening and how uh, how it is tabulated and teachers can little help can really they, st they can start analysis as i told you once they start collecting from newspapers uh, like for example that dam water uh, reservoir how many millimeters or how, how much feet of water is there in the dam all these things will lead and do we get water for summer this kind of thinking uh, will uh, this type of analysis of the data should also be increased and organization of activities to enhance prerequisites like nature visit field visits 
and participation of resource person. These are all I already explained and meaningful interventions. Yes, the intervention should be the meaningful, not that uh, that that is how we can make it meaningful by planning the situation. See, once the theme is, one theme is happening, you can think of such theme on what could be the most meaningful interventions that you can bring into the class. So for example, some uh, you are discussing about plants and if you're discussing about animals, yes, you can bring all those, uh, those pictures and, and those animations and uh, even now argumentation is there. You can just, uh, you can, the children are very surprised to see that and all such uh, modern technologies can also be used and use of technology for this model and class collaboration. So for example, teachers can even collaborate uh, from different regions and also they can uh, use apps and connect sources and you can always use internet as a source and all these things just to make a uh, uh, child's observation vibrant. The scope for group activities should be encouraged and, disc and discussion, collecting ideas, opinion, peer learning, accepting and adding to other three points. These roles that these things can happen in the classroom when we make group activities, go for a project, you make a group and, and they start working on it. Either uh, you, we involve uh, in a more way, children should involve and they should discuss and they should come up with their own, their ideas and to present their uh, work. That active participation of children in value building process like nature conservation. Yes, this has been discussed earlier also, like how uh, children are involved in uh, nature conservation. It is not that uh, they should go on with the placards and all those things. No, very simple thing. Yes, uh, preserve the school area plants and uh, try to see the taps which are leaking. Uh, try to give some water to the plants and uh, natural related issues. Can we, can we discuss in the class why it is happening? and pollution, pollution thing, why it is happening. We are using so much of uh, fuel and gender issues. Yes, is it there? You, all these things can be discussed and uh, brought out uh, in, within the classroom situations and on different social structures that we are living in, how we are living in. All these things should make active uh, and should involve children to participate in such issues. And as I was telling you, classroom readiness for a theme. Yes, classroom readiness for a theme. See, uh, now we have a plan. We have a, a lesson plan or we have a unit plan and there is a theme regarding it. And how, how we make, how we prepare our own classroom uh, for that theme. See, uh, once a child or children enter the class, uh, they should feel a kind of uh, what is happening uh, in the classroom or discussions. Say, on first and foremost, happy classroom and feel place for everyone. See, uh, it should be like that. Yes, it is my place. Uh, and uh, once, when do the children feel happy is that when you have a chance for speaking. See, when you have a chance for presenting yourself, the children really feel happy because they feel it very happy because when at home, because they have a lot of things, they are, there are people to listen to them. Their, their parents will listen to them. Their uh, grandparents will uh, listen to them. This should happen even in the classroom. The happy, the feel of this happy, that is uh, the heart should play role in this because they should feel that uh, it, is, it is their place and how it should be. And uh, yes, this is a place where I can speak, I can enjoy the class and even where I can participate. And this should come in, uh, this, is, this should be the first, play, first priority for a classroom and collection of resources in advance, adding up to the resources as the discussion proceeds. And, dis and display. See, uh, there is a theme and uh, you are preparing a classroom for that theme. In that cases, you prepare advance, uh, you ad make resources in advance and start filling it up. Start building up around your classes. Say, for example, there is a, uh, um, if you are discussing on a theme like plants and animals, you start collecting different parts of uh, different plants and animals which are around you and start uh, putting their pictures or from, you, you can collect from even children and they start uh, representing it and this all again when they come into discussion they feel it very easy to go away see this is how we make easy go for children and enriching theme related display that is what when you are discussing a theme so we have a theme based approach we, we spoke we spoke a lot of theme based approach and when you are in the classroom that should relate to 
uh, the thing. And there should be a, some kind of display like uh, boards wherein uh, they put their work. Yes, this is what I am my my contribution to the classes. And when their children does this, they feel it. Yes, I am participating within this. And creation of curiosity corner. Yes, there could be uh, like there should be there could be a, a curiosity corner where a child can bring a nest. See, and uh, children can bring lot many things to them, uh, different kinds of uh, foods, and this is uh, this is all. Uh, these things should be uh, addressed, and there should be a place for uh, the children presentation, making some such like curiosity corner and adding up children work. Yes, more than what we supply. See, we collected something uh, reports and charts. Uh, rather, you can also add up children work. This forms because once if you are placing a child child children work. They themselves will form. Yes, uh, this will help for a thing. See, uh, because ch children own work, they can understand better. So, in that sense, uh, it is very important to add up children work and place for experimentation and individual work and a group activities in a classroom. There should be a place for some kind of experimentation and individual work and also for group activities and flexible seating, scope for discussion, group activities, and free movement of children. And flexible seating uh, and free movement in the sense not that a child can move all around not like that for a purpose for a purpose the child can move around uh, can collect something collect some news collect some uh, whatever they need and they, uh, whatever they need in the sense there should be a provision uh, made uh, for from the from teacher side for uh, this kind of resources and provision for technological aids collaboration resource build up yes in a classroom, provision should be made as per the need of children. There could be uh, technological aids uh, like internet connection or even uh, computer systems or all these things for special effect we can give for children where they feel surprised and happy. And collection of theme related teaching aids, material and display. See, theme related teaching aids, yes. When you go, when you are going to the class, we, we can always, uh, as I said, one it, uh, as as I went through your uh, textbook, there will be a month around for a theme or a, for a, uh, this thing, and for all that uh, month, there could be a theme related works within the classroom, and this will even help for multi grade situation also. And as I told you, I would, uh, I would try to bring on some interventions that are uh, I discussed on a lesson called water, uh, and uh, through your textbooks, you can uh, open page number 48 to 55, and wherein uh, you can see, uh, I have discussed because this, this is the theme uh, and uh, the name of the lesson is also water. See, the I can define the learning outcomes in the beginning, like explain the process of producing and procuring water in our daily life. See, based on this uh, learning outcomes, there are, uh, it is beautifully given uh, in the textbook. See, they have introduced a topic by, <clears throat> by interaction of children, that is uh, Lata, Nikita, and Ravi, and where they are interacting something. Uh, and even I... Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I will be just finishing. See, once you start, you can see that uh, uh, all that aspects, see, they have brought out uh, the tasting of the uh, water as salty. See, salty in the sense, see, uh, there, uh, in some sectors or in some part of uh, even Andhra and uh, uh, that are near to Anantpuram, all these things, there is a fluorine content is more. When such problem is there, that, that, that problem is addressed and borewell water, then that, that problem leads to scarcity of water and how uh, the, the water is supplied. All these things have been discussed and it, it is started beautifully with the uh, discussion among children itself. And I, I even, even I have brought a small brainstorming session introducing, asking by uh, question taking situations like what difficulties do you face during summer to get water? Yes, they can give ample of questions, they can give ample of answers and how do we get water for your house? Yes, sometimes there will be fights. So you, you, because uh, there may be some places it is not so easy to get water also. And how do you feel when you drink salty water? Yes, all these things gives and this, this helps to know the initial learning level of a child. And once you start uh, building up the lesson, you can show you in picture reading and they can observe and identify uh, what they have seen. So for example, showing pictures like well, tank, river, bore well, and initiate the discussion. Here, I, I would like to bring one point because see, uh, when we are discussing in a place like a rural and a place like urban, it is very different. See, most of the children in Mysore city or any city uh, dwelling uh, children, they have not seen the well. 
so uh, so i went on uh, searching for a picture and it is it is better to show some all these things see human habitat has uh, exploited uh, all our uh, drinking water uh, aspects say for instance uh, the early human where there is a prosperity of water they must have simply used the lake water and once it uh, started decreasing they must have used the well and later still more decreasing they have used the bore well and now you can see even the bore well are failing these are all the things that are happening around children these things should be sensitized uh, in the classroom also see how this evolutionary process uh, or uh, how this gradation process that is happening around children should be sensitized see uh, once we use the very simple uh, lakes that are present around us and that's how we can bring out the sensitized to keep our lakes very well and increase our uh, underground water and as i told you you can always use nature walk as a technique field visit and virtual tour uh, relating to related to theme and taking children to real places situation for example uh, for experiences and noting the observation and tabulating and listening see all these process these techniques are very important and this once their experience and learning experiences with them and we can always discuss upon them and you can build the uh, concept and once they come in the class they can go for a group activity and group discussion and ask to us uh, and ask their presentation rather we, we give the answers and you can always ask them to give their uh, experiences and report their observation and list the sources of water they have observed see now now they can come up with a very beautiful ideas rather than you just explaining yes the well will be like this well will be like that and tank better we go go once around and it is not that the team is or they make observation for one thing they make lot of once they go within the uh, <coughs> within a village they will observe lot of other things also hospitals panchayat all these things and around how water is supplied from uh, the overhead tank to the other places of houses all these things we can make uh, because in a, such a, because it is team related how it is related to team how, that's how we can always plan and you can go for evaluation as i told you once uh, you can complete you can go for a, uh, that that kind of <coughs> uh, classroom assessment wherein uh, worksheets can be given and classified and this always this for, uh, formative assessment you can always use for improvement of the children yes once a child is not uh, not uh, given their answers well or when when they are not given yes you can always improve upon you can always work upon you can always give chance for further uh, improvement and this is how we can and you can go on, even anecdotal notes you can make out all these things you can bring up in the class and the best thing is for a simple understanding Uh, we can use such a flow chart and uh, mind maps so uh, this is a very useful technique see uh, how uh, how if there is a tank within the village how we can use yes very simple uh, they can uh, yes uh, when you see or when you draw on the board children can simply understand how this uh, uh, we are using the water uh, from the tank say for a drinking bathing for plants and cooking uh, these are simple uh, like flow chart you can use on very simple mind maps you can use and here you can see some pictures like well i told you most of the urban cities uh, now it is a very uh, uh, not available things and this this we can give a uh, picture in the classroom also like how they can feel because uh, once if you can you cannot explain these things and this also can be related to groundwater uh, level and this is the second learning outcome like understand how we get water from local resources yes and uh, as your lesson proceeds also Uh, there is impo importance of uh, that has been discussed importance of constructing tanks and uh, how the community is involved in the tank building and how, how why it is important to maintain well our tanks uh, and community efforts and responsibility all these things we can discuss we can use a technique called discuss you can bring down the resource person if there are some elders or some uh, important person within the village or place like uh, they, you can bring them and you can ask their experiences how they would yes children really feel surprised and they feel really uh, they are energized when somebody else comes in the class see uh, it is always um, we go for a new movie uh, we see something new thing we go for a new uh, kind of uh, environment somebody comes and start telling their experience they really love it and and resource and also we uh, in the in the lesson also we come across like canal system for drinking water and irrigation see most of the uh, people or children they do not know how this water is uh, uh, water has reached their city or how this water reaches to the irrigation to all out our states 
So they, sometimes we need to help them by giving them some pictures and also the historical representation. This is a very interesting things. When you're discussing such uh, important issues like water, you can always give import, uh, importance to historical representations. So for example, this is a picture from um, Jaisalmer, uh, that is Rajasthan. In a such a place, in a such an arid place or such a desert place, uh, kings of those times, they have built beautiful lakes and they have collected water uh, through nine lakes, which one after the other, the, the water flows and it is reserved. And the whole summer they are using this uh, rain. This has happened long back in the history. And this such a, if you quote such uh, important things within the classroom, the children really can enjoy and uh, really can build up their ideas. And also you can uh, in the Golconda Fort. If you if you happen to go to, go and see the Golconda Fort, they have used the clay pipes. Uh, and you, they use the clay pipes for water supply. See, in those days itself, now we are using plastic pipes. See, for an easy flow, uh, such, such um, technology of those times should be appreciated. That's how we can build curiosity among children and we can bring up something uh, new in the classroom and uh, uh, towards the learning outcome. And again, a uh, role of local functionaries like panchayat, municipal, for supply of clean water. Yes, uh, once you have visited, you can always uh, think of such places wherein uh, you can think of the functionaries of these things and their role because this should be uh, given to the children. Yes, there are some, some people or some kind of functionaries that are happening around us that is helping us or that, uh, that is uh, as a duty they are doing and we are taking out of them and they should be informed. This is what I mean to say. These things should be go to children by discussions and explaining the pictures and videos as it, how is it possible. And you can even see the how uh, a simple uh, broader diagram, how uh, from a river the water may be collected and how it is shown, shown to the grounds. This is helpful for an urban, urban sector where children might not have seen how, to, how they grow the plants, how water is supplied from the canals. They may be, it may be very simple for some children, but it is not so for many. So keeping all the uh, possible uh, views on heterogeneous class system, we can always bring down such examples. And learning outcome, like as I said, follow the suggested ways to keep water resources hygienic. So how it is we should keep hygienic? Yes, see, uh, we have a, a introductory activity uh, place, like collection of different samples of water and labeling samples and identify unsafe water. When you are dealing with the water, uh, there, are, there are some experiment also in, in, the, in the book, it is also suggested, always try to compare, take a two uh, vials of water and try to compare and show them, yes, this is impure water, this is unsafe to use, and this is pure water, it looks so clean and neat. And once they can compare, they can, um, make which is safe water and which, which is uh, ready for drinking. And unsafe water is on full effect and you can see, we can bring down, is anybody suffering from diarrhea? How did it happen? And cholera, usually these things happen during uh, when there is a storage of, uh, or water is stored in the uh, nearby places and malaria uh, by mosquitoes and waterborne diseases, always this, this happens in villages and even in the cities, always it is. So what are the things? Because you can bring up these situations uh, within the classroom. See, this is happening because of uh, mosquitoes and cholera by house flies and diarrhea with the usage of all such discussions we can make, uh, we can bring from, we can elicit, elicit from children itself. See, and once they start involving and once they start uh, starting put their hands and put their mind, this is this becomes very easy for even uh, in concept building. And that's how they can construct their uh, ideas. And once we come for suggested ways to keep water resources, see, we have a historic uh, uh, in our Puranas and all those things, we, uh, we represented the water or a river as a goddess or it is given a gender uh, female gender because we respect them these th these things yes you can even go for kaveri all these are woman name because we respect we respect our mother all these things uh, yeah which mean uh, this can be discussed to keep our water resources safe you can show in your picture also if you happen to look into your pictures you can see and they have mentioned like uh, it is uh, even uh, they are uh, they have respect for these water bodies. We do pujas during uh, festivals, right? So why why do we do such pujas and th such things can be discussed in the classroom? And always you can, as I told you, you can always explain through flow charts and uh, uh, you can use this uh, techniques like uh, discussion, questioning, and you can put up this all the uh, 
uh, what they how they are uh, water is purified so for example from the river the water may be flowing to your tanks and from the tank it is uh, sedimented and filtration is done and chlorination and it is uh, from, it is supplied to the overhead tank and this flow chart will give a picture for them see unless you give such a simple uh, flow chart or a picture it is very difficult for uh, children to uh, make a uh, or form a structure in that and and another learning outcome is that follow the suggested ways to keep water resources hygienic. Yes, the holy consideration that I always refer, uh, refer that we can, we do some ritual pujas just because just to keep uh, see you that sense of uh, touch that we should keep our water resources uh, clean, and you can you can go for a project collect a report uh, newspaper clippings about water pollution. Yes, this once they see from the. Um, uh, newspapers or any such matters that report can be collected and project method project techniques can be used and uh, you can discuss in the class how uh, these things are affecting our water bodies and pictures mind maps explanatory videos pictures and mind maps always makes children a simple understanding and if you happen to discuss a like community responsibility maintenance of tanks and water bodies and underground water especially this gives a type of um, possible all possible ways of uh, all children participating in uh, learning process of evs and also you can collect quotes and labels related to the water and what does we do with, what what do we do with that once we bring such you should make a uh, habit of reading it if you start a class there is a very good uh, quote from uh, in a class you always uh, uh, in a public or in a uh, class let them read read the, read loudly like read statements of clean water thoughts and display the labels in the school and surrounding us water uh, yes ma'am i may take only two three minutes ma'am. and thoughts of displays and labels of schools and class and community and all these things uh, will help and uh, another uh, this thing is a learning outcome that is there in your textbooks get a basic idea on the process of evaporation and condensation see basically we can start with a session see for example as i told you it may look very simple for us but when children in their age, when they are thinking about uh, water and uh, uh, how this whole river or whole uh, tank got dried up, where is what? These are all the very surprising things that is happening in children's mind. So uh, such things are such things. Such observations should be discussed in the class. And where does this water go? And such explanation can be given uh, using the mind maps and charts. And what? And you can always explain the process of changing from liquid state of gaseous state that is called water evaporation. That is from liquid state, what is there in the, uh, this thing will go into the, as a uh, air and it will form evaporation and change of gaseous phase to liquid phase as a condensation. Yes. And once it is condensed in forms in the clouds and due to the gravity and uh, change in temperature, this gravity, uh, this falls back to the uh, uh, ground as a precipitation or drizzling or whatever it may be. So this forms a water cycle. These sometimes here comes the teacher role to explain it very effectively using mind maps or even the pictures given in the textbook. And get a basic idea in the process of evaporation. Uh, this has been uh, continued and activity and uh, this, uh, I think, uh, and some, uh, 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 and coming to explanation for that matter of uh, conducting experiments. See, as I told you, always try to do it before the children. Yes, if you are using a, uh, uh, wells of water you're doing it you do it before children and ask them to even perform the uh, uh, experiments also in the sense see they should enjoy that uh, they should enjoy putting salt or uh, uh, sugar into the uh, water and, it, and they should enjoy that disappearing and once these things are happening they feel uh, really excited to conduct some more activities this is how we can always motivate them and we bring down bring up the ideas of forming concepts and again, how water is essential in our daily life. This is how uh, we can always start with a brainstorming session, like how we grow crops, vegetables. See, for a uh, sweetie dwelling children, it is not so easy to answer this question. Uh, they know where does vegetable is available in only shops. No, this is the real, real things. So we can always try to address their issues. Like, uh, and also uh, what, and it should be convinced that water is essential for always drinking and agriculture. Our own economy is standing on this. So these are very important aspects that children should be sensitized in the earlier stage. And always the collection of data. See, this is one more uh, technique wherein 
chart reading and see for example if there is a place uh, uh, there may be some arid place or there may be some water or rain uh, heavy rain places see collection of such uh, data and analyzing them in the class and simple graphs and uh, and even simple picture eyes i have a lost uh, slide in which you can show we can see some uh, pictures of uh, api i could collect wherein there are red marks they can show the very less uh, uh, underground water according to the mandals yes the children will really feel a surprise or they'll locate their own place in that mandal whether it is our place is in a, facing a very scarcity in underground water see coming to again uh, some discussions why dams are built canal system for irrigation yes so how these are utilized for uh for irrigation purpose how canal system is used for irrigation system and how underground water is enriched yes we are building tanks and uh, we are just uh, and we are connecting uh, that is our hinterlinking of uh, the river system to the tank through canals and that's how we are building up even uh, underground water also these things should go into their mind by just observing just involving and doing many activities and we should always link that the crop production and uh, the rainfall all these things you can you can ask them to collect the average rainfall or very simple uh, data that they can collect from newspaper or any other media so you know, i have the last slide to present uh, here is a si very simple uh, uh, the, you need not go for a very uh, standardized uh, data in this like uh, uh, just very simple like season wise southwest monsoon from june to september this is the information we can discuss and northeast monsoon from october to december all this gives a very simple uh, this thing whether how is the status and whether it is a normal rainfall or excess rainfall very simple things we can discuss in the class and even the report from uh, 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 meteorological department that is weather department we can find such a water uh, how much of water is been uh, how much uh, rainfall or water it is uh, a place has received and coming to this particular chart wherein uh, they have displayed <coughs> in very simple manner in a red uh, place where is a scarcity of underground water the children can look into their own places whether uh, our, uh, their place can come in red or uh, blue or green such things so all uh, these things if a such a simple representation is there within the classroom and within uh, related to theme this is how we can build up our classroom situations and we can uh, amplify the understanding of children and coming to the uh, some very simple uh, quotes for our water drink pure water and stay healthy see su such things can go to uh, <coughs> notice board or a display board wherein a thing a thing like a theme or related to water is happening and pure water is world's first and foremost uh, need of the they see you have to be healthy then you need to be uh, you need to drink a pure water i think uh, i made simple uh, uh, suggestions or uh, simple try for uh, make the classroom uh, with uh, as per the need of their theme and uh, learning outcomes you can always improvise this uh, uh, activities and you can according to your need of uh, your need and your children need i think i am finishing this thank you thank you one and all sir stop your screen share sir yeah. thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much sir for your uh, cool explanation and uh, we explained very well on how to strengthening teaching learning activities and classroom readiness thank you very much sir now i request to mr M M ms ramya ma'am please continue your session ma'am am am i audible to you yes ma'am audible the video can i share ma'am uh, yeah you can share but my video ma'am yeah, ma'am video just ma'am one minute okay ma'am okay your system then ma'am uh, just uh, one minute uh, there is a problem with the system we will get into another system just one second okay okay just stop sharing the, the screen one minute Yes. 
Ném, ném, ném. Nhấm. Nhấm cái ném nhanh. Nhấm cái dẫn. And then if you want to leave, you can use the other thing. Reality is like that. That's it, that's it. Ma'am, am I audible to you? Yeah. A very good afternoon to each one present here. Friends, I will be sharing with you my experience of teaching this wonderful subject, Environmental Studies. I will share with you how I have conducted the activities during the online classes as well as when there were regular classes. I know each one of you are doing what I must have been doing, but I hope my presentation will help you to refine further your classroom teaching process. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. Environmental studies or EDS, as we lovingly call it, is very close to each child's heart. We all know why it is close to each child's heart. Because it involves everything in and around the child. Plants, animals, water, air, it involves everything in this earth. And of course, we have included space also in that. Next slide, please, ma'am. Next slide. So, uh, the previous one. Yeah. Just a glance at the highlights of our textbooks. When I say our textbooks, I mean both the Andhra Pradesh series of book that is our world and also our textbook that is looking around series. Friends, uh, this resource that is a textbook, it is one resource which is easily available to we teachers as well as to children. And both the series of textbooks are having content made in such a way that it fulfills all uh, it fulfills a, all the criteria to make the classroom very lively now what are these criteria it is child centered here children or the child is a hero or the heroine of the class see uh, let us go back to our school days i still remember that we used to sit in the four walls of a classroom, whatever was taught, whether we understood or not, many of the things we used to just memorize it. But here, children are going to explore. They are going to do the activities. They are going to understand. And they are not going to do anything by rote memory. It is a beautiful forum for children to open up, express ideas, and learn by doing child-friendly language, there is a motherly touch for the textbook if you go through that. The regional language words or fruits, vegetables are given. So the child feels, oh, this is something very near to me. And activities are designed involving the participations of parents and community. We have brought the uh, views of grandparents and parents also into the textbook. Children discuss with them how it was at their time. And then they come back and discuss in the class how it is in our time. For example, the means of communication. Letter writing has gone almost out of uh, scene now. And even we have brought the community into the school. We bring various resource persons to discuss various topics. So the complete community is coming to the school and together we are working for our children. Pam, next slide. Uh, this is the theme of uh, looking around book series, which I won't discuss much because already the earlier speakers have spoken about it. Ma'am, the next one. Yeah. Now, friends, we have seen the highlights of our textbooks and we have also seen the themes. Now it becomes our responsibility to provide a classroom where these can be implemented. So our classrooms should provide a forum 
where children can observe see if you think about your own child when the child was very small you will see that the child will be observing his or her surroundings and he will start questioning children will be asking so many questions we will feel how simple these questions are but for the child it is a big question mark why it is like this so never ever snub a child try to answer him or her allow the child to explore experiment interact and discuss so that they come to know that oh this is the thing and this is the way it has to go next slide please yeah now i welcome you all to an activity feel joyful learning experience of evs classroom but before we start this a few things i have to tell you before you start any activity in the class always keep your students in mind keep the group of students in mind for whom you are making that activity because if we pick an activity which is done by somebody somewhere and bring it to our classroom it may not be successful because our children the children who are there with us each child is different and see that whatever activity we do it reaches to every child including the differently able children they should feel i am a part and parcel of this classroom i am not left alone second thing is make the activity very simple and interesting think from the child's point of view if i do this activity how it will be for my class students then resources this subject evs has got enough resources the nature itself is a treasure house of resources only thing what we have to do is we have to just trap those resources and put it in our classrooms then while we are doing the activity also don't teach the content first and then do the activity at the last no that is not the way it has to be done we have to teach the content through these activities therefore activity assessment and even our learning outcomes becomes a part of our classroom teaching if we keep all these ideas in mind i am 100% sure we can fulfill all the criterias which are given in our textbook ma'am next slide please yeah so first uh, let us make our garden a classroom so the garden becomes a classroom i have picked up one lesson from the ap textbook that is plants around us and then our book the plant fairy now how am i going to introduce this lesson to the class what i am going to show you here is what has been done practically in the class and i have been successful in bringing about the concept of various types of plants the shape size uses of leaves the parts of the plant and children have knowingly learned sorry unknowingly learned the concepts by doing so ma'am next one so these are the expected learning outcomes see they will be able to identify simple observable features of leaves trunks and barks of plants in immediate surroundings they will understand the need for plants and trees and speak about the why do we need this green plants all around us and the ultimate aim of it will be to develop a concern towards nature they have to start having a concern towards their nature that we have to protect these plants these uh, animals so that we will not be having any problem afterwards ma'am next one next could you please play the video
Thank you. Friends, uh, you have seen this video. Of course, there was no audio. I, I didn't keep any audio so that we could observe what is there. This garden, which is very near to our classroom, is my main resource for teaching this lesson of plants. I take them there. I divide them into groups. I have 35 students in one class, so seven groups of five members each. Before going there, I tell them that you will have to see around the plants, observe the leaves. You have to see uh, whether any uh, small and small insects or anything is there. All those things, I give them a time to observe. Once they have observed everything, they come back and we sit there in the same garden and we have a discussion. What have we seen? I don't speak, they speak. So they will be telling there were so many varieties of leaves. The colors of leaves were different. The, there were some plants which was trying to climb on another plant. See friends, they don't know what is a climber, but they know that that plant was trying to climb on another one. Then there was another plant for tree also. Many of them, they don't know what trees are. So they will tell that it was very thick. The stem was very thick. So by doing, by questioning, by answering slowly from the children only, we get the answers that there are trees, herbs, shrubs, climbers, creepers. And then uh, as it is given in your uh, textbook and our textbook, the types of leaves, the colors of the leaves, all this can be beautifully discussed in this garden only where we have got living specimens, that is the plants. Now, after doing this activity, now this video actually I had taken for to send for my children during online classes. If you don't have a garden like this, you can uh, even use the kitchen garden of your school or any place near the school, you will find a place where there are plants. So that can be converted as a resource for this. Ma'am, the next video, please. Children, here I have got a plant. We will try to learn the parts of this plant. See, this part which is below the soil, this is the root. You can see it is full of mud. See, here I will show you the roots. From the root, the stem comes out. See, this one. And here we have got the leaves. This plant is having so many leaves. Then, see, here... We have got buds, then flowers, and then finally see the fruit of this red in color, like cherry, you know. See, so these are the parts of the plant. Once more, roots, stem, leaves, buds, flowers, and fruits. So now friends, uh, you have seen the plant in the same garden has it become a resource for us to explain the parts of a plant. So things are very simple to us now. Now we will see how the child after seeing this video, because I have done this video again, I'm telling this was for the online class. If it is a regular class, it, everything will happen in the garden only. Now the child after doing it, how the child has tried to uh, tell about the parts of a plant. Just have a look at that. Ma'am, play, please play the video. Hi everyone, my name is Chiragam. My school name is DMS. I am studying in third A section. Here you can see so many plants. Yeah, uh, if they see that is enough ma'am. This ma is a brinjal plant. This is a grass plant. This is cosmos plant. Because all these are mobile recordings. Now I will tell you about plants and its parts. Here you can see this part. This part will be in the soil. This part is called roots. You can see this part. This part is called stem. 
On the stem, there's so many leaves. And there is a flower. The flower is in it has got stuck. purpling color. And you can see one brinjal. Now, that's all about a brinjal plant. Now, you can see a grass plant. You can see roots and roots and leaves. This is a cosmos plant. You can see roots filled with soil and there are so many stems and so many leaves. There are two birds and two flowers. Thank you. Yeah. So now you have seen how the child has done it. So when we demonstrate to them, they will also try to understand that and try to do it. And by doing, they understand that more better. Ma'am, next one. Next slide, please. Yeah. This is about the different uh, leaves having different types, uh, shapes, sizes. Uh, I have made a small video to send it to my children. But from this video, you will find it very clear that if we do it, if we demonstrate to them, they will understand and then slowly they will do. The leaves the child has collected may be different, but the child has understood the concept that this is what we are trying to convey to them. So what I am trying to tell is if we are away from our students also by doing things, by recording that, we can bring them closer to us. Ma'am, please play the video. This one. No, no, not that one. The previous one. Previous one, please. Children, here I have got a variety of leaves, you can see. One by one, we will see them and try to understand about them. See, this leaf I have plucked from a papaya plant. You can see how big it is, isn't it? And this one I plucked from tamarind tree. See, they are very small. So, some leaves are big, some are very small. Some are of medium size. Leaves have got different shapes and sizes. This is one point in this. Second thing is, some of the leaves, they are dark green in color. You see this one? This is of jackfruit tree. Whereas, this one, this is of ajwain, home card leaf, but it is not very dark. And there are also some leaves which are very colorful. See, see this one? You can see green color, some yellow or white shades on that. This is having entirely different color. There is no green color at all. And see this one? This is of money plant. This also, see? Greenish pink. Isn't it? So, leaves can have different colors also. This is an old leaf of jackfruit. It has become almost yellow in color. See? Then some leaves, they are long also. See? This I have plucked from a grass. This is a grass leaf. It is almost long. Then we will see the margin of the leaf. Margin means this sides. Okay. In this case, it is quite smooth. But here you see, it is having different shape. See, there is a cut like this as we do with scissors. And this is neem leaf. See, it is almost serrated. See, cuts are there. And this money plant leaf, it is almost heart shaped. And see this one? This is like needle. So from this we understand that leaves can leaves have different shapes and size. 
they have got different colors they have got different types of margin so in this way leaves have got a lot of variety yeah so uh, this uh, we have done to tell them about the shapes and sizes of leaves and the margins friends uh, if with our mobile the mobile which we use normally with that mobile only i have done that recording and the video has come out uh, beautifully and with the help of the same video the child now has tried to collect so i have given the title as look into my collection yeah the child can probably say see how ma'am has made me to understand i have explored my surrounding and collected the following leaves will you please play the next video different colors different margins and different shapes now i am going to tell you about the leaves this leaf has this leaf is dark green in color this leaf is light green in color and this leaves and this leaves have yellow in color and this leaf has yellow patches on green leaf and this leaf is red red in color this leaf has yellow has white lines on the green leaf now i am going to tell you about the margins of the leaves this is in as you can see this is the margins this is a long margin and this is a heart shaped margin and this is a round in shape margin now i am going to tell you about the which about which leaves are these this is a adjoint leaf this is hibiscus leaves this is guava leaves this is pumpkin leaf this is bitter gourd leaf this is beetle leaf and this is a lemon leaves so leaves have different margins different shapes and different colors this leaf is hard to touch this leaf is soft to touch and this leaf is spongy to touch you can you can feel so many different touches of leaves thank you yeah so this is how now the child has explored his surrounding and he has tried to present that i do know now a lot about leaves next slide please yeah play a game learn a theme let us play plant fairy game this is a very interesting game which is there in the ncert textbook the second lesson here see children always love to play games and by playing this game they are going to learn a lot about plants what we have to do is make one child a plant fairy that too see every child will tell i want to be plant fairy i want to be plant fairy so the teacher will be in a confusion what to do so better write the names of all the children on paper chips and put it let one name be picked whose name comes that child will become the plant fairy now the plant fairy will be giving instructions like go and touch a plant with big leaf so they will have to search for a plant which is having a big leaf and they have to touch that touch a tree with thick trunk so now search for a tree which is having thick trunk 
while this is going on we have to observe how the children are moving about how they are observing their surroundings so by playing this game we will come to know whether they have understood about the types of plants the learning outcomes which i had discussed before that learning outcome if we look into the very purpose of that will be served here and we could achieve it ma'am next slide please yeah let us integrate art in evs friends we can integrate art in evs only thing is that we teachers have to be a little creative and let let me tell you we are all very creative and our children will provide us that opportunity to show us our creativity i have an uh, hobby of writing small stories and because i teach evs all my stories will have plants animals insects reptiles all those so this uh, i actually uh, this was a role play which i made uh, for my class when i was having the regular class but now i uh, during online class i converted in, into evs story time so uh, they enjoy the thing as a story or a role play but they will be again going back to the concept of plants so just i will brief what it is the story Uh, we will show a forest scene or a farm scene but we need not have a big big mask and other things if you have a green dupatta or a green sari that is more than enough to make a, a forest scene or a farm scene now in that farm or forest there is a neem tree a jackfruit tree a mango tree coconut tree you can ask the children to tell the names of trees whichever tree they want let them become that and then a bitter gourd plant comes there it looks very tired searching for something and then it comes near the neem tree and it uh, requests the neem tree will you provide a support for me the neem tree gets shocked why are you asking support to me can't you stand erect like me see i'm standing erect all my friends are standing erect we are moving in the wind the bitter gourd plant says no my stem is very weak my stem is very weak i need a support then only i can grow and then bear nice bitter gourds the neem tree was again surprise so the neem tree asks are you the only one member in your family or are there anybody else also so the bitter gourd plant says there are many members bottle gourd ridge gourd grape vine you can tell the names of all those examples which are very familiar to children which comes under this climber category so the neem tree says okay you go back and bring all your friends all my friends will, will provide support for them to grow up this is all please don't change this is only a starting of the story the story continues with the entry of shrubs herbs and uh, climb uh, creepers and slowly we can build on this now by showing this doing this role play or telling the story we are also developing a very good value in the children that is we have to always help a needy another activity which you can do is an interaction interaction means a group of children will become like domestic animals another group will become wild animals now the wild animals and the domestic animals start interacting with each other on what basis on the basis of food they eat ears can be seen hair on the body feather on the body all these topics you can put there and have an interaction another beautiful thing which you can do is an interview interview of a wild animal by a domestic animal or a domestic animal by a wild animal for example in if i take please don't change the slides i request you not to change the slides the wild animal for example if it is lion 
Now a cow is interviewing lion. The cow asks, what is your name? The lion says, I, my name is lion. I am the king of the forest. What do you eat? I eat the flesh of other animals. And the moment the flesh word is told, the cow gets scared. Do you live on land or in water? I live on the land. I can't live in water like your friend the fish. Who are your friends in the forest? Tiger, leopard, jaguar and all those animals which can, comes under the carnivorous group can be included in that. This is only a small example which I have told. You can divide this into various ways as you need. Now friends, uh, this is again, enjoy my creativity. I have put uh, this activity is there in your textbook also and in our uh, series of textbook. This is a work done by the children. Ma'am, the next slide, please. This is uh, as we have seen in the learning outcome, the rubbings of leaves made by the children. Next, please. Yeah, now uh, let us explore. I have taken this lesson, Seeds and Seeds, from our textbook. It is of class five. Next slide, please. Here, the expected learning outcomes are they will observe and share their experiences for different phenomena, and they will conduct simple experiments and activities to know more about the same. So they are going to conduct the activity. We are only going to facilitate them, push them from behind. Ma'am, next slide. Yeah, usually I start this uh, lesson with a poem. A poem about a small seed. So how the poem goes on? Ma'am, I will only tell the poem, don't play the video. In the heart of a seed, buried deep so deep, a dear little plant lay fast asleep. Wake, said the sunshine, and creep to the light. Wake, said the voice of the raindrops bright. The little plant heard and it rose to see what the outside wonderful world it might be. Friends, children always love poems and stories. And this poem is directly related to the germination of a seed, the conditions required. Make it into a role play. Nothing is required. Make a child to sit, cover the child with a towel, and as this poem goes on, let the child slowly get up and become a small plant. It's done. And by doing so, children are going to learn the conditions required for the growth of a seed. Ma'am, next slide. Yeah, this is another activity which we can do very easily. All of us have got uh, pulses in our house. This uh, you can tell the children step by step how to go about it. And the last slide, uh, last uh, picture, you can see the sprouts formed. And these sprouts can be used for making a healthy, nutritious salad in the classroom when you do the lesson eating together in the theme food. Children will enjoy that because it's the sprouts which they themselves have made. Next slide, please. Now, uh, here uh, you will be able to watch a video where I have tried to convert my own classroom into a small laboratory. Video, please. Yeah. Now, we will do the activity on page number 43. Okay. This activity, you should observe the seeds for two days and then you have to record your observations. So to do this activity we need some chickpeas. Okay. Around 15 seeds we need. If you don't have chickpea you can take any other seed. No problem. You need some cotton. If you don't have cotton you take a cotton cloth. Little water and then we need three bowls and a plate to cover this. So what are we going to do? In the first bowl, we will pour some water 
and we will put around 5 seeds into this. Okay. So, in the first bowl, we have just soaked the seeds in water. In the second bowl, we will keep the cotton and then we will wet it nicely. And then again we will take around 50, sorry, 5 seeds and we are going to place it in this cotton. See. Always see that your cotton is wet. Your cotton should not become dry. And in this bowl we are going to place the seeds like that only. Okay, I have not put any water, just I have placed it. Now, what we have to do is, all the three, we should cover it with a lid. And you have to observe the seeds for two days. And you have to see in which bowl the sprouts are going to come. This experiment each one of you will perform. Yeah. I have just told them what they have to do. I have not told anything what will happen to the seeds which we have put there. Now the child is going to do. The child will observe on the first day, second day. What is happening to my seed? That... Curiosity will be there to, for the child. What is happening? And the child will observe. The child will record his or her observations. And they will come out with their conclusion what has happened. Now, we have to be observing how things are going on. We should see the observations of the children and then try to correct them if they have gone wrong somewhere. For example, the second uh, bowl. Children, they will not wet the cotton properly. So, some seeds may sprout, some may not sprout. Ma'am, next slide, please. Good evening, ma'am. My name is Taksha Chanakya Rebanta. I am doing first day's activity. See ma'am, I put channa seeds. This is a first bowl. See ma'am, the channas are same. It not changes the color and size. And in the second bowl, the channas are very soft. And it absorbs the water. And the colors are changed. In the third bowl, the channas are again absorb the water. And the channas are started sprouting. See ma'am, this channa is already sprouting, started. Thank you ma'am. Yeah, so now uh, the result of the activity is very well in front of you. The child has done it. The sprout has come. So this shows that if we give them a forum to observe, to work out, they will definitely come out with the result. Ma'am, next slide, please. This is our observation table where the child will be putting uh, the seeds in bowl 1 and 2 and 3 and they will be observing and they will be noting down their observations in this. And these observation sheets will help us for our formative assessments. Next slide, please. Yeah, please play the video. Now we will do the activity on page number 44. Okay. 
for this you need a small bowl like this if you don't have a bowl you if you have a clay pot i don't have a clay pot so i have taken this and then you need some seeds you can take any seeds i have taken coriander coriander i have taken you can take fenugreek that is methi or you can take even your uh, mustard saswe okay and then we need some mud so first what we should do is we should put a small hole at the bottom of this box okay i have pierced it why we should put this hole yeah when we fill mud into this and we plant our seeds when we pour water if the extra water is not flowing outside then what will happen is when the seeds start growing the roots will get spoiled they will get decayed so we have put a small hole here now we have to fill this box with mud wet it once so that it is easy for the seeds to grow and then put your seeds don't put too many seeds we have learned in fourth seeds should be placed in small quantity in equal distance so just spread it like this see okay and now leave it see that your sand don't become dry don't pour too much water into it just sprinkle water and then you have to observe this daily and day by day you should start filling the table on page number 44 height of the plant number of leaves seen or any other changes suppose it does not come out or uh, the leaves get dried off all those you have to observe clear so here also we have seen that i have just shown what has to be done they are going to do it and i will also show you the result of this the next slide please the yeah they will be having their observation table they will put the observations date wise the height of the plant once the plant comes out the number of leaves and any other change some cases what i have observed is children will not put that hole under the uh, bottle or anything in which they are trying to put the seed so what will happen is after few days their plants die off and then they are very worried that my friend's plant has grown very well and mine has been spoiled so that is again where we have to correct them next slide please yeah this is uh, when we did our kitchen garden uh, we could grow it and this i have done in the regular class when it was that the children were coming to school but now i have sent it for them to do the activity at home next ma'am yeah so till now uh, we were somewhere around and uh, near our classrooms now our teaching of evs will be incomplete unless we go beyond the classrooms because we have got uh, the nature spread all around us which is a very good uh, resource a treasure house as i told before next slide please so i have taken this lesson animals around us and from our textbook year to year there is one more lesson in class 3 our friends animal so all these are uh, related to the study of animals and for this uh, the best thing to do is once you discuss the things in the class take them to a zoo or a farm where they can see the animals and by seeing them they are going to learn a lot but you should be very clear that once they come back you are going to ask them come some questions and discuss with them so that planning should be done from our side next slide please yeah the expected learning outcomes uh, identify different features features like beak teeth claws 
hay and nest all this they will identify there they will classify them as carnivorous herbivorous and omnivorous depending upon their eating habit group behavior of animals and they will also develop a concern towards animals and birds so here this last learning outcome it gives a lot of importance for us because we are bringing up all these things to develop this concern towards our nature next slide please yeah we have uh, the mysore zoo full of animals and birds so we usually take the children there this is our visit to mysore uh, zoo and here uh, there are certain conditions which the zoo people themselves have laid we are not supposed to carry anything with having plastic we can either carry paper bags or we if we want to carry food also we have to carry it in steel bottles or something no plastic so that thing we have to tell the children so we are going to develop in them a environmental friendly thing that is plastic free environment next slide please next slide please yeah you can see them they are exploring the aquatic birds they are exploring the land animals so by after going there when we give them an opportunity to observe to see they will come back with a lot of information and this one activity we need not do it separately only for evs you can integrate this with language you can integrate this with max also next uh, slide please ma'am yeah once they come back there is a beautiful game which i have uh, designed uh, only we need some golden papers or if you don't have golden paper we can just take a white sheet and make stars on that and then color it in yellow color then you make circles on the ground where you will be putting the different characteristics of animals like land plant eating giving birth to young ones like that now write the names of various animals on paper chips you can even ask the children to write they will write and then put the chit suppose i get the chit as cow then i have to move around all those circles which are related to me for example i have will go near the circle showing land plant eating giving birth to young ones ears can be seen and then uh, plant eating yeah plant eating i have told so with this i have to do within seconds we will be noting down the time if i cover all this then i get one star so this way they will be learning the characteristics of animals this you can use for plants also or another any other topic this game you can use next slide please next slide yeah now uh, we have got one lesson in our uh, textbook that is of wolf's tell story this is about golconda fort the history of golconda fort and this lesson connects us to our past and we know that after fifth when children enter into sixth they have got history as a separate subject they are going to learn in social studies so this is a connecting link there and this lesson is where we can involve our grandparents also because they will be having so many things to tell us about the past next slide please next slide please the expected learning outcomes are a trace the changes in practices customs techniques of past and present through coins paintings monuments museums etc materials or tools occupations buildings and houses so i have i'll show you one activity which i have done uh, it took me around one month to plan this activity because things had to be collected i'll show you how i have done in my regular class and also last year when online classes were going on then the next slide please yeah this is uh, these are the pictures of uh, children displaying all the old items of the past which they have collected you can see uh, bamboo baskets are there copper vessels are there and they have collected information about each of these from their grandparents and friends you know many of them were not having grandparents with them they have called them over phone and they have collected the information so this shows the enthusiasm to know more about it now when it came to online class i was thinking how to go about with it but 
that worked out beautifully and you will not believe here where i got 100 exhibits when it came to online mode there were more than 300 exhibits because they could collect information of many things which they were not able to carry to school because they were too heavy for the so just i'll show you a glimpse of the video of what they had collected it was a 9 to 10 minutes video which i have brought down to 1 minute just few things i'll show you ma'am the next slide please please play the video a uh, very well shows their interest to know about the past this such activities can be done very easily only thing is we have to take the help of parents and grandparents and then we have to plan it well ma'am next one next yeah now uh, in our um, ap textbook there is a lesson sense organs and in our textbook there is a lesson in fourth standard just kid goes to school see uh, all our classes are inclusive now we have got differently able children in our classrooms in our school in every class we have at least two differently able children and in my last 17 years of service every time i was involved with them because they were always there in my class and i could develop an empathy among other children towards those children and could develop a confidence in them that they are also equal to each one each child in the class so these lessons how to go about with this ma'am uh, next slide uh, here are the learning outcomes participate in different indoor outdoor local activities carried out projects and role play for taking care of differently abled see initiatives of care share empathy leadership by working in groups so we have to develop this in children so in uh, ncert textbook in class 3 there is a lesson sharing our feelings and there is uh, one more a lesson uh, saying without speaking there is a beautiful poem in that lesson saying without speaking in this activity after teaching the poem and everything we had invited madam from uh, speech and hearing that is all india institute of speech and hearing which is very close to our school she came and taught the children sign language and when they were able to do those sign language they could understand the feelings of the children who cannot speak just show the next slide ma'am yeah you can see the children doing the sign language activities and one more activity which i usually do in my classes our own music ma'am she cannot see so she becomes a resource person for me in for my lesson sharing our feelings there it is about uh, people who cannot see she will bring her braille and she will explain to them how to use it and children also love to ask her so many questions so by doing so they also understand their feelings next slide please yeah i was going through the ap uh, textbooks and i saw that this lesson eat together and eating together just three letter difference ing so 
this is again a lesson if you are having midday meals in the school this lesson will work out beautifully your kitchen where you cook the midday meals that can be used as a resource for the team food kitchen garden it can be used as a resource for the lesson plans and then you can organize uh, a very good activity like how i have done we don't have a midday meal so my children and they have brought food from home next slide please so the learning expected learning outcome is they will learn the importance of eating together on different occasions next slide yeah here you can see they are displaying the food items which they have brought from home and this also took me around 15 to 20 days to arrange this because i had to prepare a menu who will bring what then there are some children who will not be able to bring anything so uh, i told them you bring one lemon or you bring little sugar we will enjoy lemon juice if we get 10 lemons and then sugar lemon juice can be made and one item i will also make and bring so they were happy that mam is also going to make and some bring something for us and here you can see i we have spread paper so that the area is kept clean and here in the third uh, photo you can see they are making churmuri they were only making that salads we had made on the spot so when we were doing this they understood that we have to wash our hands before serving food before eating our food we have to wash our hands after eating we have to wash our hands and our nails should be trimmed properly the area where we are doing this activity should be very clean before during and even after the activity is over before we cut the salads and vegetables we have to wash them and there were food from different cultures in this uh, activity because we have children from different states so they also learn to respect the diversity in food this is a beautiful activity which any any teacher can do because food as a resource is available everywhere next slide please after this we had arranged a nutrition talk by a nutritionist you can see here children were asking so many questions to that ma'am only thing is we have to prepare them before what are you going to ask and then if questions are repeating cut it down next slide please yeah this is a, there is a lesson a snake charmer story and in your textbook there is a lesson alert to a alive tomorrow in that first aid about first aid is given and there is about a snake bite what first aid has to be given so that is why i took this one ma'am next slide next slide please describes the interdependence among animals plants and humans how we are linked with each other next slide here we had called a snake sham to our school he is a person who is involved in conserving and protecting of snakes and he gave a beautiful lecture about snakes and after his uh, interaction his demonstration and other things even i had a phobia for snakes many of us we lost that phobia of snakes and we also understood what we have to do if we are bitten by a snake so he is from that field where he is doing the one that work so he would be able to give a better demonstration than we teachers ma'am next slide yeah our teaching of evs would be incomplete unless and other ways we integrate ict in our classrooms but friends i have only one thing to say because it is environmental studies wherever it is possible give hands on experience to the child now there are some lessons like uh, the lesson related to organ systems digestive system respiratory system excretory system in those uh, lessons you can use beautiful videos how the food moves from our mouth to the intestine stomach that those videos you can show and another lesson is there in our textbook um, sunida in space and uh, here uh, in ap textbook there is one lesson about um, uh, earth and space so in such lessons where we can't bring 
sources from our own surrounding try to show them the videos here i have tried to make a small mind map and i usually make mind map as a at the last to show, use it as a source of revision ma'am please play the video So friends, uh, this is a mind map which I have made for the lesson, our friends animals. This can be used uh, for the textbook lesson, animal world also. Any lesson we can make mind maps and these can be used in the starting of the lesson or in the as a revision at the last. So here uh, our friends animals I have given the uses of animals. We get egg from birds, meat from animals. We get milk from animals, animals carry load for us. And as we click on this, I have given three examples here. And one by one, when we click, uh, we will get the image of that. So by doing so, children will get more clarity of the uses of animals for us. See here also, you can see I've done the same thing. So one by one, we can even we can ask the children and then we can open it. Depending upon our classroom situation, we can modify it. And this is very helpful as this creates a lot of interest in children because uh, as each one of you know, these days uh, children are very much interested in uh, information technology than more most of us. So better than us, they know it and they get very attracted towards such uh, examples. So this is the way I have done it. We, you can create it for any lesson you want. Even our lesson uh, of plan world also, we can create this. So uh, slowly, slowly we have seen how it has opened up and the complete lesson has come into a small slide. Friends, uh, this is about uh, my experiences of teaching this subject. See, it is said, little drops of water, little grains of sand, make some mighty ocean and the pleasant sand. Now, we are primary teachers, but such small initiatives which we take in our classroom can leave a big imprint in the minds of these small budding talents. And they will carry it out throughout their life. See, no plan will fail, but we only fail to plan. If you plan and implement the activities as it is given in the textbook, I am 100% sure that you can make NEP 2020 a reality. Ma'am, next slide. See, here, I have tried to share the links of eVidya programs. I have done four videos and there are some more videos of mine which will be coming up. You can go through it, you will get more ideas how to do the activities. Next slide, please. Next slide. Please, next slide. Friends, let us come together to brighten up the future of India. It is said, what I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. What I do, I understand. Let our blooming buds explore the omnipresent evergreen environment. Thank you, each one of you who has listened to me patiently for such a long time. And also I thank each one who has given me this opportunity to put forth my experiences. Thank you once and again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for your uh, wonderful presentation with uh, demos, projects, activities, inclusive classroom, and also ICT tools like mind map. If how to time was there, I would have yeah, shown yeah, more yes, activities. But very, very nice explanation, ma'am. It is very useful to 
ఉపాధ్యాయ మిత్రులారా చూసారు కదా ఎంత మంచి మన ప్రెసెంటేషన్ మన క్లాస్ రూమ్ టీచింగ్ లో కూడా చాలా బాగా యూజ్ అవుతాయి చిన్న చిన్న ప్రాజెక్ట్స్ చిన్న చిన్న డెమోస్ తో మ్యామ్ చాలా చక్కగా ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేశారు ఇవన్నీ కూడా మనకి చక్కగా యూజ్ అవుతాయి యూటిలైజ్ చేసుకొని క్లాస్ రూమ్ లో మరి మనం యూజ్ చేస్తామని మనస్ఫూర్తిగా కోరుకుంటూ అలాగే రేపు లాస్ట్ సెషన్ మనకి కోర్సు లో అందరూ కూడా త్రీ ఓ క్లాక్ కి అటెండ్ అవుతారని మరొక సెషన్ తో కోరుకుంటున్నాను ఇంతటితో ముగిస్తున్నాను థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ వెరీ మచ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ మ్యామ్